Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Discovering the Bible Together Challenge. We are in week five. Week five, we're talking about the Holy Spirit and prayer. And today we're going to be reading from Luke, Luke 11, the first four chapters. So let's see what God's word has for us today. Once Jesus was in a certain place praying. As he finished, one of his disciples came to him and said, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. Jesus said, this is how you should pray. Father, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. Give us each day the food we need and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to some temptation. And that ends our reading today. That was short. That's a bit familiar. The Lord's Prayer kind of has its basis there. So how are we going to reflect on, on this message from Jesus? I've entitled this reflection, How Jesus Prays. And you know, the theme we've been focusing on is the Holy Spirit and prayer. Understanding both are so crucial to a healthy faith journey. After a couple of reflections on the Holy Spirit, today we focus on prayer with a simple example given to us by Jesus. You may recognize it like I did. I grew up saying the Lord's Prayer in church every Sunday. I never realized where it came from. Matthew 6, verses 9 to 13, is another place where Jesus teaches us how to pray. What this tells me, more than anything, is to keep it simple. Our prayers don't need to be elaborate or long. We do need to keep this one thing in mind. Jesus starts his prayer by calling out God's greatness, his holiness. I think that's a good reminder for us. Who doesn't like a little praise and recognition? God must certainly cherish each time we honor him and give him attention. He craves a relationship with us. Leviticus 26 verse 12 says, I will walk among you. I will be your God and you will be my people. Even as God's law was being revealed to the people, he made it known to them he was with them. He created us for a purpose. That purpose was to love and obey him. Our prayers or communication with God should reflect that from the start. Jesus also showcases we should ask God for God's kingdom to come. I'm not sure I include that in my prayers all the time. However, I've been known to cry out, Jesus, please come back. I suppose it's in those times of despair when I see what's happening to families, individuals, and even nations. I know who wins in the end. I just wonder how many lives need to be ruined before Jesus returns for the final victory. Many times my prayers can seem like a laundry list of I wants. Does that happen to you? Jesus doesn't seem to discourage that. In fact, he wants us to ask for God's provision. But here it seems that provision is focused on our needs, not necessarily our wants. However, even our wants can be motivated by our needs or those of a loved one. What about our enemies? Do we pray for them too? Jesus also encourages us to ask for forgiveness in our prayers. He takes it a bit farther to include the line, as we forgive those who sin against us. Ouch, that's a hard one, isn't it? Forgiving others can be one of the hardest things to do. Yet, in this short example, Jesus includes that as important. What if God only forgave us as much as we are willing to forgive others? This is certainly a line to wrestle with. 
I think of bullying. It seems like school children aren't the only ones being traumatized these days. Evil is running rampant, causing all sorts of unhealthy divisions in our world. It seems like it's new, but it's not new, just packaged a little differently, perhaps. Evil has always been at work to take a foothold in our world. History has a way of repeating itself. So what's our best defense against this evil? Prayer. Lots of prayer. I don't think we can pray too much. First Thessalonians 5.17 says, never stop praying. Never is a very long time. It suggests that prayer is always the relevant choice. We can't survive without it. Jesus concludes this lesson by reminding us to ask for help with temptation. He knows from his personal experience that the evil one will tempt us time and time again. We might even not recognize the temptations at all. That's how crafty the evil one can be. It's a little frightening. Covering ourselves in prayer is a defensive act, to be sure. Putting on the armor of God is also good. You can read more about that in Ephesians 6. Jesus has given us a great prayer model to follow. Simple and to the point. But I'd like to add one more very crucial piece of our communication with God. What do you think that might be? Gratitude. Don't you think we should tell God how thankful we are for what he's doing in our lives? What's the last thing you thanked God for? Let's pray together. Repeat after me. Father, you are an amazing God. Full of truth and love for me. despite my own weaknesses. We need you, Jesus. Thank you for all that you supply me every day. Forgive me when I take you for granted. Continue to guide me each step of the way. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. May you be blessed today. We'll see you next time.